How are you guys doing today? The question is, what does it take to be a master deliberate creator of your world? To be a master manifestor? In order for you to be a masterful creator or a deliberate creator of your world, you have to know the rules of your world, the structure of your world. You have to know what I call the game. You know what, man? Hmm. It's like this. There's games. Human beings, we make up a lot of stuff. First of all, everything is made up. You know that. Nothing is actually real here. It's like a big game. So if you look at sports, they have different games in sports. What does every game have? Every game have a rule to the game and how to play the game, right? So the game will always have the rules and how you play the game. The same applies to you and your life. You're actually in a game. A game that has rules and also there's a manual of how to play this game. The problem though is when this game formed, they didn't tell you the rules and didn't show you how to play. They kind of threw you in the game and said, go figure this stuff out yourself. So what I did was I figured out the rules of the game and I figured out how to play the game. And that's what I teach and that's what I want to share with with people and that's what I share with you guys is the how to rule the game. First of all guys, you got to look man, remember. I'm actually, I'm a living testimony that you can manifest or create whatever you want in your life. You follow my channel, you follow that stuff. I've done things that people will say, well, you can't do that. For example, like winning the lottery. I'm living proof that you can deliberately create or manifest anything you want in your life. And that's what I want to talk by figuring out the rules of the game and the instruction manual on how to play the game. Someone says, what do you think about getting a tattoo of your angel number? Wow. I can't believe someone said this because you know what? Again, it's the rules have synchronicity. I was just talking with someone today about this. And they were, asked, they were telling me like their favorite number was 777. And I told them my number is like the eights. And they're like, I should get a tattoo of that. I was like, man, that may be a great idea. Because if you get a tattoo of your angel number... It's always going to be impressed on your unconscious mind. It's always going to be impressed in the universe. So like if you like the eights or the sevens, you can get them tatted on you. You get them tatted on you, man, that's a clear inviting message. So yeah, that's recommended. You can get your angel number. Because when you get your number on you, more stuff are going to come to you about that number. And that number is going to be into your interior. So if you're someone that likes that, the tattoos or whatever. But if I'm get tattoos, I'll definitely get my number, my angel number. 888-77, whatever, 111-555. And I thought about that. So that's a confirmation someone asked me today. I said, hey, I should, we should get our angel number. I want to get 777. Like, hmm, you know what? That's a brilliant idea. Because that number on you is always going to attract whatever that number represents. So if you want money... Get, get sevens and the eights tatted on you. You're always going to have money. Always, always. Now, now, that's the one thing you want to get tattooed on you. Not someone's name. Because then you have to, you break up. You're, gonna, you're never going to break up with the sevens or the eights or the angel numbers. So, how do I know what my angel number is? The number that follows you the most every day. The number you see the most every day. That's your... Um, your angel number. So if you see the more number you see every day, that's gonna be the number. But uh, how do I b build a belief of winning a big jackpot? Um, so you know what a belief is? A belief is a thought 
that we think over and over and it becomes a belief. So if you want to believe it, you have to keep thinking about it, maybe visualizing it or um, make it realistic for you. Sorry, guys, my um, like my eye, my eyelash right here, man, I was stuffing it. I don't know, I got these long, long eyelashes, man. Every time there's like stuff always in my eyelashes. Sorry, so let me just get them out. Sorry. Okay, much better. Um. So, the the rules of the game, right? And the owner's manual for this game. So the first step to 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 master your life or to be a deliberate creator of your life, guys, is step number one: is you have to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself means applying discipline, applying repetition, applying the focus. The mind is the machine that operates the software of the game. So your mind is what creates matter, the real stuff you see in your life. Now, the rules of the game now is how the universe works. Rules of the game is quantum physics. Quantum science or quantum theory shows us what this game is made of. What this game is actually made of is nothing more than lots of energetic particles. And our brain descrambles these things and we see them like it's ah, real stuff. Those are the rules of the game. The next rule of the game, another rule, that's the rules of, but the interesting thing about the rule of the game now is that your mood dictates what you attract in your life. Your feelings, that's what also powers the game. Self-mastery is the most powerful thing you can do right now to change your life, of course. Mastering that self. Man, how do I master myself? By mastering the mind. Where is the mind? First of all, the mind is not inside of you. Your mind is outside. So you aren't your thoughts. You are what you're doing. The mind is like you're receiving information. When you receive an information, you process it. And it processes it into your subconscious in your subconscious mind. So the, the first tip about this game is, okay, you got to know how the ego works. How many people here know how their ego works? Someone will say, yeah, man, I know how my ego works. No, you don't know how your ego works. I'm going to give you a crash course. On, to show you how your ego works. Your ego is the, the biggest one of the biggest distractors for you in this game. So let me show you how the ego works. Rule number one about the ego. The ego loves certainty. If it is if it's not certain, you're gonna have being problems. Your ego is gonna make stuff up. That's number one. The ego loves certainty. Step number two. The ego always sees the worst eyes again the ego always sees the worst I'll give an example when you have what you call problems in your life or stuff to happen you know what your ego does when you have a little problem or situation your ego now multiplies the problem by showing you other facets of that problem getting worse it's like once a little problem it's over today it's like oh man you see the worst and it brings you in a spiral. Now, here's the important thing about this part. Whenever your ego does that, it's not true. Because what it's trying to do, what your ego is trying to do, is trying to figure a certainty about fixing the problem. But the thing is, your ego can never fix problems because your ego is the same mind that generates problems. Because when you have a problem, it exasperates the problem by making more problems of the problems. That's right. Someone says it. It blows your problems out of context. That's correct. But the thing is, see, because people don't know how the game works, when they hear the voice in their head, which is the ego, they associate it as real life, like it's going to happen. And that's what they. That's what happened. They, they, they lose their focus. When they lose their focus, that's when they're going to miscreate. 
someone says, I cannot visualize with feeling when I imagine myself rich. I feel relaxed, simple, no excitement. Well, that's good. That's your feeling. That means your mind has accepted that. You, you got to understand that with, with person's body and mind, they react to emotions or feelings a lot different. So, for example, your, your um, view of being wealthy or successful is going to be a lot different than someone else's view of wealthy or success. Your feeling of wealth or success is going to be a lot different because of your unique makeup. Never try to follow like someone's same feelings because it's like different parts. They're not going to match. You got to find a part that matches for, for your particular feeling. So that's okay if you can do that. Um, that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. I feel really normal without huge happiness. It's like a normal thing. But, uh, you know the best state that you really want to be in to create life, I mean to create the manifest stuff, is really a state of, of contentment. I figured that out, man. When I'm content... All my the doors are always open for manifesting. When I'm too high or too low, that means the door is open when I'm too high. But when I'm too low, the door is closed. So I like to always keep the door open. So I strive to be content. I strive to, and how do I get to be content? I bet I get to be content by not uh, being detached. By sorry, by not being attached to things. I I am I am putting myself in a state of non-attachment. So if you want to get everything you want, you have to not want everything you want. Let me repeat that. It's a, it's a parallel paradox, but it certainly works. If you want to get everything you want, you have to not want everything you want. Let that sink in. That's deep. So that's where the middle ground, and that's where I, I got to. So I got to the point where I, I want everything I want, but I also got to the point where I don't want everything that I want. Okay, Mark. Makes no sense, bro. What are you talking about? How can you want this and then not want it? Okay, it's not. It's all about a state of being. It's not the analytical I want versus. It's what I feel. See, I can feel want, and I can feel not want. I can feel my desires, and I can feel like I already have my desires. I can feel the want, and I can feel like I already have the want. You see what I'm talking about? That's content. Or that's a state of peacefulness. Someone says, who's this brown? Brown skin bay. I understand, but it's hard. Yeah, it's going to be difficult at first because, again, right, no one taught you the game, how this stuff works. Non-attachment. So acting and feeling normal is a good way. Is a good way. Acting and feeling normal is the best way to manifest anything in your life. Why is acting and feeling normal the best way to manifest something in your life? Can someone comment and tell me why? Let's see how smart you are in, the, in this game of manifesting, the game of how the, what life works. Why is acting normal and feeling normal the best way to manifest anything? I understand you need to be in the matrix... You need the matrix. What is this? How do you feel content in a toxic, negative something? All right, so look, here's the, you're out of your ego. Yes, that's true. But here's a here's a here's the answer, guys. Acting and feeling normal makes things relatable to you. It makes them realistic. To manifest, to create anything in your life, guys, your goals have to be realistic. If it's not realistic, it's fantasy. When it becomes fantasy, you're not going to manifest it. Right? You're not the ego. That's your content thread. You're not the ego nor the lack. I like that. Remember that, guys. Very important. When something is realistic to you, you will 100% manifest it. 
I'll, I'll, I'll use my example. When I, man when I was manifesting to win the lottery to buy my car, at first, it wasn't realistic to me. Because I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't understand, like, how am I going to do this thing? So what made things realistic to me, and this is what can help you guys to make stuff realistic to you, is that what I did, I went in and I found the owner's manual for how the universe worked, and I found the rules of how the matrix worked. Those two components make everything now in my life realistic. There's nothing that's unrealistic in my life ever again, because they were hiding the, the, the instructing manuals, and they were hiding the rules of the game. The matrix was hiding all that stuff from me. So what I did when I did my research, I bumped into quantum physics. That was the rules of the game. The rules of the game. And then the owner's manual for how the universe worked was how my mind operated. And once I started to delve and study all those stuff up, that's when winning the lottery and manifesting the lottery to buy my car became realistic. Now it made sense. And when it made sense, my subconscious now got impressed. And when my subconscious got impressed, I knew it was just a matter of time before it manifested. So that's the secret if you're going to manifest anything. You've got to make it realistic. And once I found out that um, life isn't the way life is when they, made, they taught you how life is. Once I found out that I'm actually not even here. You're not even here. That was mind-blowing. Once I found out that this body was a representative and who I am was more like a, a spirit, like a non-physical being interacting as Mark, that's when it blew my mind. And that's when I, what even blew my mind even more was I found out that nothing was solid in this world, not even my chair or the seat. You know what even blew my mind even more? That when I take my attention away from something, it ceases to exist. And then when I put my attention back, it pops right back into my reality. All of that was very difficult to grasp in the mind because that it's not something you're used to every day. Every day you you your five physical senses like see stuff. And then what, what even baffled what was something that even baffled me more was when I discovered like why I why these things were happening was I found out that I was only seeing one percent. Of reality see all those stuff they hide from you so a lot of that, that so when I sat, sat down I said to myself damn I got these five senses I thought these senses were like everything I need to interact with my world and the rules of the game of quantum physics says no he says mark your senses are lying to you all your five senses are just made to interact within a three-dimensional sphere your 3d world is not the universe <laughs> your 3d world is a slither of the entire universe and I was like, damn. And I was like, I asked myself a question. I said, so, that's when information came to me. And it says, so, that means there are things going on around me, sounds going on around me, ideas going on around me, information going on around me, maybe even beings going on around me that I can never interact with or see physically or even feel them because my senses are only able to tap into 1%. Of the entire spectrum of reality. And that's when it dawned on me. I was like okay. Now I'm going to play the game. So I said alright. Okay now I got this. Let me go win the lottery. And I did it. And I was like alright let me win more lottery. Okay let me do this more. Let me do that more. And it was like okay. It started to work. And I was like wow. And that's why I say I'm living testimony. So if you're watching me right now and you have a goal or a dream, it look like it's hard, it's beyond you, that's actually an illusion. You can go read, manifest anything you want to do right now. Any specific books you read? Actually, no, I wrote my own book. I wrote two books. Manifest it with quantum physics and then manifest the lottery using your subconscious mind. Uh, those are two books I wrote. First book is basically about everything I learned and downloaded. It came to me. Um, and that's how I figured out how this stuff works. That's why I said there's a, there's rules and there's owner's manual. Now let's move into the mind part. So I got I got the 
the nature of reality works. So everything became realistic to me now about manifesting to win the lottery, to buy my, to buy my car, to make me feel good. So I figured that out. So now it was realistic. Now I felt more confident. See that? So the next thing that made me even feel more confident now, now I start to discover the self. The self now. That's where I got into the mind part. Now that's, out of everything else, I mean the quantum world was very trippy. But when I discovered the self, whoosh, that took it to another level. And I was like, man, they have all this stuff and they hide it from us. Like, how come I didn't know this? You know, and I was in religion. I was very religious. Even Christianity. I was a Christian and all. And I never seen this in Christianity. Matter of fact, in the church, this stuff wasn't even talked about. And I, now I know why it wasn't talked about. But, so let me break it down. So now I discovered that I was like, okay, I figured out that the voice in my head was a representative of me. It wasn't me. That was my ego. And I figured out that there was a real me. But the real me didn't live here, like in the 3D world. The real me kind of lived outside. And I figured out that I could communicate with that real me. Not only could I communicate with the real me, but the real me had every answer. Listen, man, the real me had every answer to solve any problems in my life. Not only could it solve any problems, it could get me anything I wanted as long as I made it realistic. I, when I discovered that, I was shocked me. And then I discovered something even more. I knew about my subconscious mind because I know it was powerful. But then I really, it, I tied it together when I discovered that what happens is my subconscious mind is like a program. It runs on my actions and habits. So it's going to watch what I do and say, right? But then I found out that the real me, my, I call my higher self, it can talk to my subconscious mind and it can use my subconscious mind to give me insightful information where I can get like my intuition, haha moments. It can go through that channel and that's how I get all the answers and that's how the thing. And then I found out that the real me um, told me that my reality was manifested through my subconscious mind. I had no idea. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I create the world through a mind that I was unconscious. I was not conscious of. I thought I was creating the world through like my senses. In fact, it was the opposite. I was creating the world through what something I wasn't uh, aware of. And I, I says that's when I started to discover. Okay, so the rules of the game was I had to start to train my subconscious. So I started to target that, like, like going to the gym, you know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. I started to do things to target that part of the mind, man. And um, that's when my reality changed. That's when all this stuff changed. And I was like, mm. I was like, wow, more people need to know this stuff. The Matrix doesn't, uh, what? When? Where did you find all your research? Ah, uh, just most of the research I found mm -hmm. through downloads from the universe, and there's things like I read online, or it just made sense. I used to watch a lot of like science stuff. Uh, I read uh, some science books, research papers, things like that. It was it was, it was a cumulative, cumulative thing. Um. Now I want to talk about the self now because this is the, this is the, was this was a game changer for me now. Um, the self. Okay, so once I discovered right that the world isn't the way it really is and that we only see one percent. Okay, that's fine. Then what really even shocked me more was I didn't know this. I did not know this, but now I do know this. I always thought that my world. I'm talking to you right now was outside when I get up every morning and I look outside I thought that was the cause but when I once I discovered I discovered something very profound I discovered that it's literally impossible according to quantum theory that the world is outside of me it can't be outside of me L impossible that's when that's when it shocked me I, when I discovered that the world was inside of me reflecting outside.
through my eyes. Yeah, it's okay to have negative days. It's part of it's part of our reality, part of your world. Just don't get caught up into it. That was the game changer for me right there, man. And there's science to back that. That's what it was even more profound. And I, was, I said to myself, I said, I've been going to church for like 10 years since I was a kid. It's like, why didn't they tell me that? Why did they, why did they tell me that I was the creator of um, my experience? Like what I see was based on my beliefs, my thoughts, and my program to my subconscious. That was shocked. <clears throat> first, I couldn't. At first, I didn't believe it. I didn't buy into it because it didn't make sense to me. But the more I tried to not believe this stuff, the more it showed me evidence that it was true. You know, there's something profound. When something happens in your life that you discover something that's so profound that you don't want it to be true because if it was true, you you realize that everything you're doing was wrong so you try to figure out a way to, to debunk it, to make it a lie. Everything I did to try to refute this, like, this is a bunch of BS. Ain't no world inside of me, man. Everything is outside because I'm seeing it. My senses are... The more I tried to do that, the more evidence came to show me that, Mark, this is the truth, man. So you're going to accept it. And, I, and I'm going to give you the per, one big example to show me this was the truth. And I, you, this, was, this was the one that I tried to refute everything, but I could not refute this one. My cells. The cellular metabolism and the makeup and the structures of our body. The placebo effect. Like, why does science, when they create a drug, they have two types. They have the placebo, which is a sugar pill, and they have the actual drug. And they give it to both participants. And both participants, the placebo heals just as the regular. And it's because of a belief. And that's when I, that one I couldn't shake. Because it's true. So what I discovered was... The images I saw in my head was the same images my cells saw. And my cells don't my cells are illogical because they're run by my subconscious. So whatever I saw of myself in my head, whatever I thought of my world in my head, the cells in my body would generate a vibration that interacted with my subconscious that sent information outside of me known as electromagnetic energy and this is quantum science and when this information ex exited my being or my body it interacted with reality which is a field and reality is a field of energy there's nothing real about reality and whenever that energetic interacted with the field of reality then it would circle back again then it would come back into my eyes then my brain now would decode that electromagnetic signature as images of real stuff, even of you people. Even people aren't real. Even I am not real. It takes next level consciousness to understand what I'm just saying to you. So if you don't understand this right now, it's fine. If you watch this over and over again, you'll get it. But you need to know this stuff. Everybody around me, including myself, isn't here or you, you're not here. Even the people you see aren't real. They are makeups. They are representation of you emitted outside this field. Now, science is showing this. Now, if, okay, before they used to have this thing where they called it, it was EKJ. But they hook up on your brain and they used to take your brain scans, right? And that's how they would map the mind, right? But in the past few years, they developed a new technology now. Where they discovered that the mind isn't even in your head, man. Because with this technology, they can scan your brain right here. They scan your whole mind now right here. You don't have to plug it up to your brain. Your mind is not in the head. Your, the mind is right all around.
Are there also cells in your body? Yes, your body is comprised of trillions of cells. These cells act as a community. They act together and they send information to the unconscious. Every time your cell sends this, every time your cells talk, they communicate what we call electrochemical signals. Cells communicate to each cells. And the communication, electricity and chemical, and when they communicate, they send energy outwards into a field. And this field, like, is very smart. This field organizes things to look like real physical stuff. That's just, the, I mean, that's, that's the easiest and most way you can understand this stuff. Regardless it looks real to you, it's an illusion. It's a hologram. That took a while to swallow, but I got it. That's when I got it. When when that when I got that, I changed everything. I changed how I look at myself inside my head. I changed my self-talk because I realized, like, damn, man, I was really destroying myself because I noticed I had negative thoughts, negative talk, put myself down. I'd listen to what people say, and I was creating this new reality in my head of my world, and it was showing outside the world, man. That was... That was the thing I couldn't refute because everything that was in my head was in my world. My beliefs, what I think I could accomplish. But then I started to change the inside. I was like, all right, man, let me go and see. Let me test. Let me test this stuff out. I said to myself, let me test this theory. Let's see if it's true. Let me do something that is literally impossible to do. Let me go win the lottery and buy a car. How many people can get up every day and say, you know what? Today I'm thinking, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to visualize, I'm going to win this lottery. I'm going to buy this very rare car. That's considered literally impossible. I'm not going to do it by luck. I'm going to deliberately do it. And I know what, matter of fact, I'm going to do it a certain way in my head and it's going to reflect the same way in my world. I said, I said, I'm going to do that to test this theory because if this is true, then I could do anything. And I applied that theory, and voila, it was 100% true. 100% true, man. So that's why I say I'm a living testimony or testament that you can create anything you want. Because anything you want is already created inside of you. There's nothing that I, I was like, damn. And that's why I'm talking. That's why I talk about people. That's why I say to you that there's the rules and the owner's manual, but they don't show it to you. They sh they shove you into the matrix and say, "Go fend for yourself." So, should we ignore our three D circumstances and live inside like we want our world to be? Yes. Now, here's the key. Now, ignore your three D world doesn't mean not getting up and going to your job or being a just slouch or just ignoring your problems. That's not what's three ignore 3D. Let me show you the definition to ignore 3D world and live inside your head. Because that's how you create world. It literally means this. Whatever is inside of your head has more precedence that's what's hap than happening in your 3D world. In other words, when you're in your 3D world, you are aware that you're in your 3D world. But you know your 3D world isn't the end point you know the real world is in here and then when you when you have it in here it's going to become the 3d world so what you do is you make peace with your 3d world you don't fight your 3d world you don't resist your 3d world what you do is you accept the 3d world that is changing from what's inside your head that's the balance how you do this that's what it means to ignore your 3d world All right. So that's what I do. That's what I started to do. I'm a And look, remember I said guys, the 3D world is a sliver. You only got 5 senses in the 3D world. That can only pick up 1% of the actual world reality. So that I'm literally telling you 
that your sight, your smell, your taste lie to you every single second of every day. Your, your eyes, your brain tries to make the best of your world every single day, man. That's not your world. So are you kind of memorizing your future? For Yes. So you always live within the goal in your head. In other words, you, you have to see your vision despite what's happening in your 3D world. Because this is the, this is the thing that I came to realize, guys. This, this was the game changer. It's called cause and effect. Okay, here's cause. You know what cause and effect is, right? I always I was led to believe that my rea outside world was a cause. I was causing that. No, my outside world was an effect. The cause was greater than I ever anticipated. The cause was coming inside my head. So what I would use to do, I would try to change my outside world. But now you see how that don't make sense, right? Now you see it wouldn't work. Because I can't change an effect. An effect is, pre is precursed by a cause. Okay, it's like this. Let me show you. It's like I spilled the milk, right? Let's say I spilled milk. And I'm going back... And I'm trying to take all the droplets of the milk and reorganize it back into the cup. I can't do that, right? The milk's already spilled, right? I can't reverse back and just... It's impossible, right? That's what I was doing. That's what you all... That's what all of you do right now. Do you have... Do you have coach or YouTube? Yeah, I have my YouTube and my... And I have a... I'm a mentoring sessions. You can find them on my... Uh, YouTube channel or my website... Oh, but yo, look, but look, let me repeat it. This is what this is what ninety percent of people do. Listen to me. L look at spill some milk on your counter. That's an effect. You hit it up, right? Now I want you to go ahead, take up all the milk, and put it back in the cup, and make it make the, make it exactly the way it was before. Every drop, fill it right back up. You cannot do that. But that's what we do when we look outside. We try to fix outside. You can't do that. It's like doing the milk. So what, what causes the milk to spill was, was in the internal. That's how my world works. So what I did, I stop, stop. I literally stopped trying to fix 3D world. I don't fix the 3D world no more. You know what I do in the 3D world? I observe the 3D world. I'm open for the science from the universe about the 3D world. I let, if something comes in, I let it come in, something go out, don't go out. And what I do, I test my 3D world. And if I meet resistance, I know I'm to stop because my 3D world is an effect. So what I do now, I fix my head. So what I, I go into my head and I repeat in a vision, in a feeling, in an image of what I'd like to experience. I do that over and over. That now reciprocates back and becomes my 3D world. That's what I do. I never try to fix anything in the 3D world anymore because it doesn't work, it doesn't exist. It's, it's ludicrous, it's madness. The 3D world for me now is just a point of observation and focus to look for signs from my universe, from the universe to show me the next step to create what's already in my head. That's all the 3D world is anymore. Whatever comes in the 3D world, I'm at peace with it. I observe it. And the reason why I do this is because I know internally that my 3D world is always changing based on what I'm thinking and I'm feeling. So, by me doing that, I'm going to always be in control. Well, not always. I'll, be, I'll, have, I'll have about 80% of control. Because in the 3D world, we live in a quantum field, right? And a quantum field is, we, are, we have probabilities. So a particle, you, you, you can't, I can't tell you specifically where a particle is going to be at any point in space or time. We can't do that. So that, that's why it's called uncertainty. So here's the big, here's the big, here's the next big picture, guys. Remember I said about your ego that it loves certainty? Well, guess what? The real world is uncertain. There's no such thing as certainty. 
everything is uncertain until listen now until I pinpoint until I pinpoint a specific desire a specific outcome I focus on that specific outcome or desire then it becomes certain only when that happens though but the natural law of the universe is uncertain this is why I struggled and this is why so many people struggle because their mind is trying to find something certain that the world is not certain the basis of reality is uncertain which is here's a, here's a, here's a kicker I found out that uncertainty is actually a great state it's a it's good to be uncertain now look this is deep if you know, you know. Listen to me. It's great to live in a universe of uncertainty. It's actually best thing. Can someone tell me why? Why is it best to be uncertain in the universe? Anyone knows? The truth is, nothing is certain, guys. I like this comment here. I have to get you down. Let me see who it is. This is uh, Kipinoko. Yeah, she says it right here. Because when you when you when you live in a world of uncertainty, which is the base of the universe, you are open. Everything is possible. In an uncertain universe. And certainty would be boring otherwise you said it. Keep you on your toes. No predestination. Correct, correct, correct. Anything can open. Yeah, that's the beauty of this. But to your ego, your ego is always going to try to give you this illusion. And that's why you worry. It gives you certainty that your life is going to mess up. Your problems are going to get worse. It's going to be this way. Your ego is like so certain. Like, you know what? This happens. Tomorrow this is going to happen. The next day it's going to happen. Da 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 And it really, it, it really brings you down. You know what I mean? It really brings you down, my friends. It really brings you down. Finding coins constantly doesn't mean I'm aligning with the universe and the subconscious. Yes, finding coins. Now look, here's the next. Here's the next thing I learned about the game: money, 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 abundance. How money really works? What money actually is? How can you get more money? How do I get more money? That's the next part of the game that they didn't teach me, and I discovered all that stuff too. And again. We go back to the quantum world and we go back to the mind. So I discovered that people, we have like two different maps of reality in our subconscious mind. This is what I discovered. I discovered that I have a map of reality about how I view myself. And then I have a map of reality of money or abundance. So there's a, a, there's a you have an abundance map. And you have a map of yourself, like your likes, your dislike, your capabilities. So there's an abundance map in your subconscious and there's a map of yourself. But here's the thing though, the abundance map wasn't activated. All of you have an abundance map of reality in your subconscious, but probably mo it's not turned on. You know what, it, it goes to the next map they have now? Three maps you have. Guess what the other map is? You have a lack map of reality. A scarcity map. That's the one they turn on in your subconscious. That's the one that's turned on in your subconscious. Your subconscious has these three different maps of reality. Your abundance map, scarcity map, and a map of yourself. Who you see yourself, your beliefs, capabilities, talents, gifts, da-da-da. Those three maps always exist in your subconscious. 
they are one whole but they have three separate parts and what happened is the only one that's turned on for most of us or for me was it was the lack map of reality I, I didn't know I had this abundance map that was there to get me anything I want like you got you have all everything right now if you want to live the life you want if you have if you want to get more money to live the life you desire you have it right now man it's but it's not turned on man so I was like damn so I have that in me so I started I was like I got to find a way to turn that stuff on I, I got I want to turn off this scarcity map because that's what's getting me what I don't want so I was like so guess what let me show you something I want you to pay attention right here. First, I'll say this. You are a genius. The true definition of a genius. I'm going to tell you what a genius is, all right? And I'm going to reveal something to you that's going to blow your mind. And it's so simple. It'll make you a money magnet right now. It'll turn on your abundance map of reality right now. But let me show you something because I want you to get the context of this. The true definition of a genius is anyone that can take something that's very complicated and make it very simple that even a child will get it. And that's what I'm going to put to you right now. And we're not going to go into all the details about paradigm shifts and do this to do that. But I'm going to show you a simple technique that will turn on your abundance map of reality and turn off your scarcity map of reality. And it took me years to find, figure this out. Five, four years actually to get to this point. And it was so easy, I didn't even know it. So I'm going to take my glasses off so I can show you. I can tell you this stuff. So, to turn on your abundance map of reality in your subconscious, all you have to do is every day focus and think about and put your attention on only things you want. Focus more on what you want and less on what you don't want. That took me four years to figure that out. I'm telling you right now, and you may like look at the like, gosh, why didn't I think of that? How it works is so profound. Let me show you how it works. First, I want to make sure you get that. Focus more on what you want and less, and, and less of what you don't want. It'll turn on your abundant map of reality. And it'll turn off the scarcity map of reality. And let me show you why. Because now, remember now, I go to quantum science now. This is what I. This is how I turned out. I found out that my reality is really created by my observation and attention to a specific point, a thought in space-time. Based on what my attention and focus is on, that is being fed to my subconscious whether it's real or imagined. Repeat that. Whether it's real or imagined. The game changer, the aha moment came with about the imagined part. I didn't realize it could be fake. I thought it had to be real. The law says even imagined. I was like, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me I can just think about having more money? I can think about my end goal. I can think about myself driving my car, my dream car, my house. What I can think about that stuff, even though it's fake in my, it's not real, but in my head it seems fake. And quantum science says, yes, because your subconscious cannot differentiate between what's fake and what's real. And when I started to focus only on what I want. And I got really good at this, man. With practice, of course. Once I started doing that, whoo, whew, you know, when I won the lottery, was it the Fantasy Five? I thought that was my biggest win. Nah, I kept, man, it was just, that was just a, that was a trickle. I started winning more money than I ever thought in my life. 
I started getting more money than I ever seen in my life. I started getting more opportunity than I ever seen in my life. I turned on my abundance, rich man. Because I developed focus on what I want. Biggest game changer. Biggest game changer. It took me four years to just figure that little thing out. And no one could even tell me that. Four damn years to figure that thing out, man. Gosh. Crazy. Four years. How could me just sitting by and just thinking about what I want over and over more often? I didn't get that. That's it. How did you strengthen your ability? Okay, how did you strengthen your ability? Only focus on what you wanted. Yep, that, that was that was that's a great question because that's the part that I had to work on. So what I did was whenever I tried to focus on what I wanted, I would always get interrupted by you know who? The ego, the big bad guy, the negative lack guy. Every time I try to focus on what I wanted, this guy would interrupt me. And I was like, how the hell am I going to focus on what I want, man, if this guy keeps interrupting me, man? So I figured out how that worked, too. So what I did was, you know what I did? I helped my own ego. So I was like, all right. So the way the mind works is, for the ego particularly, it's like, okay. So I, my ego is like a crying baby. When a baby's crying... What we'll make the baby stop crying? Put a bottle in the baby's mouth, give him his milk. The baby will stop crying usually, right? The baby's like, ah, so here you go. If you have a baby and the baby's crying, put a bottle. Baby stop crying. As a matter of fact, the baby starts to fall asleep. It's like good. So what I did was I gave my ego what it wanted. So I realized, all right, okay. So the reason why the ego is stopping me is because the ego don't believe it's realistic what I'm thinking in my head. So like, all right, so what, what if I show my ego evidence? That's how I fix my ego. So what I started to do was I started to like put myself around content or programs. I, was watch, I would watch stuff of people doing or manifesting or creating that's possible to my ego. And my ego would see it and say, okay, so okay, that guy did it. Oh, okay, so you can do that. Oh, you can make money in your sleep. Oh, there's people that's making $20,000 a day. People can make $100,000 a day. People can make $50,000 a day. People can make $20,000 a month. So all that stuff just started to show my ego the possibility. When my ego saw that, it chilled. Because all your ego is looking for is some proof of what you, whatever you put in your head to be realistic. See how it works? Is thinking about what you want or thinking you already have it? That's a great question too. Thinking about what you want comes down to, when you think about what you want, you're telling your mind you already have it. So you never have to think about already having it. The minute you think of something you want to your subconscious mind, it believes you already have it. That's because your subconscious is illogical. It can't differentiate and logic like your mind can do about thinking about what you want, thinking about what is having it. Once you think a thought in your head, here's now here's how the subconscious knows that you have it. Over and over again, that's when your subconscious thinks, thinks you have it. So I could think a thought today... But if I don't do the thought tomorrow or the next day or five days in a row, it won't get impressed to my subconscious mind as having it. So once you repeat a thought over and over, it's saying to your subconscious mind that you have it. So you never have to try to have it. It's just the consistency or the repetition of having it. Oh, man. Who's this guy right here, man?
To be honest, once I moved away from toxic family, I really started winning. Yep. Because people affect energy. We're all energetic uh, participants. Oh, you see this guy? Who's this guy? I'm gonna block this guy. You see? Hmm. I don't know. Let me see. Block this guy. Block. Block. There we go. I don't know what this guy issue is, man. Embody male, spirit, father coming. Da 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 da. Do not resist, father. I blocked him. I blocked that dude. Yup. But you have to see, guys. The game changer. I'll, I'll upload this live again. I'll put it on the YouTube because um. I know some of you are just joining in, and you missed a lot of like good stuff there. How to become an observer of mind and control it. The best way to become an observer of the mind is to watch your mind from behind the scenes. That means don't get entangled in the play. Watch the play develop. An observer of the mind basically means I'm sitting here and I'm projecting what I want once I project what I want in my mind, I step back out and I watch it as a participant. I don't get involved with it anymore. I don't because if I get involved, I'm gonna get my feelings into it, I'm gonna create resistance. So I'll create what I create what I want to project in my mind. Example, let's say you wanna have like more wealth, and you want more money, you wanna get somewhere nice, something like that. So I would see what I want, then I'll jump back out and I'll watch it and let it play by itself. I'll just think about it freely, openly. I don't jump in with my feelings. I become aware of the awareness. He's still commenting. Those are old comments he had up there. So if you see in his comments, those are old comments. See how it works? Mm -hmm. So that's how you become an observer. Look, here's something you got to remember. This is, this is a game changer here. All right. The only thing you know that you truly know is your own awareness of your experience. Like the only thing you know, you don't even believe this, but you know is that you are aware, right? That's a knowing. I am aware right now and I know of my own feelings and experiences. That's it. I'm aware. Look, I'm looking around. That's the only thing I know. That's the only thing you know. So awareness or knowing is the secret to manifesting. Because when you become aware or you know something, there's no attachment there. There's only allowance there. Just like you know you're aware. That's how, that's how you got to approach observation. Uh, the, the placebo effect you, the placebo effect comes from a belief you use the placebo effect by building your belief by repeating a thought over and over again and it will be, be a belief or you can use affirmations how long did you visualize winning the lottery before you actually went and played it and won so I, w I was visualizing winning the lottery every night for nine months until it happened and I was playing every day during that time Remember now, in the subconscious, time doesn't exist. There's no linear time there. It's just until it impressed it enough and the divine time to win. But I would visualize every night. I mean, there's some nights when you don't feel like visualizing, but that ha that's normal. But every night, I, I, and I, every night I went to bed, I would never miss a night without thinking about winning or visualizing something. Why does it create again... If it believes it already happened. Because our brains live in a feedback loop. Remember now how your brain works. Our brains are always slow behind reality. So our brains process information. Even though it's already done. Before your brain gets this information. It has to slow down. It's like, a, it's like if you're watching a program on something. 
and the, the feed freezes, but the programs continue and then the speed picks up and you catch back up. That's why it looks like it's already happened because it's already happened, but your brain is so slow to reach that point. It looks like that. To change the thought patterns is very hard, especially when become addicted to bad thoughts. Yes, uh, but it can be done by just redirecting it and being disciplined. That's what I'm invested in yourself. Yeah, that's the thing about the brain, guys. The thing you know they don't teach you and tell you this too is that you're not actually seeing true reality right now. Even though we're in the present moment right now, this is not actually the present. It's impossible to see the true present. We can feel the present, but you can't actually witness the true present because your brain is always skipping. This, the, the brain process information is always behind. So what you're seeing now is technically like the past, so to speak. Makes sense. There's no past. but So that means when you manifest something, that's why when you know something is there already, it's already done, but you just haven't experienced it because your brain takes time to gather the information, to process your cells, and to, for you to say, oh, I have it. What comes first, uh, thoughts or feelings? So the answer to this one is, this might shock you, what actually comes first is feelings. Now remember guys, feelings are unconscious. Well, they're very subtle. Some of them you can't pick up. But feelings will always generate thought. So what usually comes first is a feeling, and a feeling will create a thought. Now, with that being said though, here's the thing now. Thoughts are around at all times. We pick up a thought by activating a feeling very quickly and that creates a thought. So it will make it seem like you create a thought first but it's actually you create a feeling first. Remember, majority of the feelings though, remember the majority of the feelings are undetectable to us because they are hidden in our unconscious. Remember, we only see 1%. <clears throat> Do you see how that works? So your cells can com com communicate faster with one another. Yes. Your cells communicate like the internet communicate. Like when you take up your phone and you call someone, go from the cell tower to that, your cells communicate with other cells. For example, in your, in your, let's talk about your immune system. You have what's called interferon cells. These are the cells, like when, let's say when you get sick, when a, if you get a virus or bacteria comes in, these cells are activated, they're called interferons. So what happens is, when the cells come into your body, they hijack your cell, because in your cell is a factory where they can, they duplicate and create cells. So what the virus does, or the, the bacteria, virus, it mimics the cell, it goes into your cell and it copies your cell, right? So what happens is, your cell has a defense mechanism in there, your immune system. When it notices an intruder, it sends a signal. See, like Wi-Fi? Its signal is so fast, it's electrochemical, it activates what's called interferon cells. Now, what these interferon cells do now, they come in, and they realize, they say, wait a minute, this guy's hijacking your cell and making copies to make you sick. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a signal to interfere with the cell to block the transmission so you, you can't make any more copies. Like that, it's done so fast. It sends the information out like that. Then what, okay, so when this interferon cells stop the virus, now the virus has a new mechanism. It says, all right, so you can stop me, so I'm just gonna mutate where I can bypass your interferon cells. Guess what, that's how your body's so smart. The interferon cells realize like, okay, damn, this guy tricked us. I can't stop the production. So what the interferon cells do, they send information, fast information now, to what's called your killer T cells. These are the big guys and all that. These guys, you can't stop them. They kill everything. They kill cancer cells. So when the killer T cells, they get activated, they say, oh, come on, guys. We have a virus and he's trying to trick. So what the, what the T cells, what the killer T cells do now, they talk to your cells and they tell your cells they, they give information, to speed, speed of light, faster. They tell your cells, hey, I want you to open your open up your cells. So your cells now are like, like window. They open a window. Like a, you like window shopping, you can see what's inside it. So they tell your cells, show me what's inside of you so that they can see the guy hiding. So all your cells now, 
will open up a little bit. So when the killer T cells come in, they'll know which cell to kill. Because now your cells are open and the virus is in your cell. Your killer T cells know automatically, there you go. So every cell that's open, if your killer T cells are looked, there you are. It'll kill all the bad cells and the good cells. That's why your body don't kill you. Because there's information being transferred back and forth. And look, that's just on the cellular level. That's on the microscopic level. Now, where do they get this information? How do they know the process? Who, who's telling them to communicate? Like, where's the brain house? Like, how do the cells know to talk to each other? Where? DNA, pre-programmed, already before you got here. And they all communicate like internet, like information. They travel like light waves, electric, electrochemical waves. Like when I pick up my phone, hey, what's up? Your killers, your cells do the same thing. That's how your immune system keeps you healthy. Most people don't even know that how powerful the body, like the interferon cells, the killer T cells, talk to every one of the cells infected, and your cells will open up like window shopping. And the killer T cells go by and they could see inside. By that time, the virus can't hide now. So, how do you, how do your cells, your killer T cells, know which one is infected? Because your cells are advertising them. Your cells say, Look, the bad guy's hiding in here. The bad guy's like, Close up, hide me. Your cells like, Nope. So, I'm instructed. Now, keep in mind, your killer's T cells, they have to communicate with billions or millions of cells to do this stuff. How did information get to millions and billions of cells so fast? Faster than light, faster than the speed of light. It's instant. The information goes whew, like that. We're talking billions. It's like you, it's like me picking up my phone and calling 4 billion people on the earth at one time. It's impossible. I can't do that. I can pick up a phone. I call everybody at one time. No way. There's not an immense power to hold that, but your cells can do that. That's how, that's just an example of the communication systems with information on an electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, because everything is already inside of you, right? Mm-hmm. Faster than dash, yep. Now, the reason why, see, there's, so we, we understand, like, okay, faster than light, all that stuff is good. But there's a thing called entanglement, quantum entanglement, where information is tangled between two things, and there's no speed barrier between that. Uh, example, like the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, so speed of light is not the fastest thing. What I'm saying to you guys, the main point I want you to understand is this, that everything that is in a context, they created it, all right? Light and all that stuff is made up as derivatives to our reality. But everything happens instantaneous in the moment. <clears throat> Everything is inside. So in your DNA is housed all the information that was downloaded. Downloaded when you were created, when the universe first, I wouldn't, I mean, I can't even use the word created because you can't be created. That's another thing because the universe wasn't created. The universe has always been here. We discovered that. It's mind boggling for you to get that. So that means you can't be created. It means you're always here. So I just use created to make sense to come in here. But um, that information has always been with you for, forever, ever, 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 ever. Nothing can be created. There is nothing to create. Everything is already here. Hmm? One beam of light can be split into two. Yes, two particles and it can exist two places at once. That's correct. Yeah. And that goes into the parallel world of your, your being, that you can be in two places at the same time. Not only two places, but infinite places at the same time. Because light, a part, you are a particle, remember that now. You are light. You are an electron. It takes an electron, right? Everybody's an electron. If you're not an electron, you're dead. You're not here. <clears throat> if you're watching this, you are an electron.
Fo when you say what? Focus on what you want. Is focus doing the action? No, no. Focus has nothing to do with action, guys. When you're focusing on what you want, it's about a state of being and a state of mindfulness. Focus on what you want means that you're optimist, you're seeing the vision, you're visualizing it, you're feeling it, you're imagining it in a fun way. That's the focus of it. Now, when you do that part, then the action comes in later through your higher self where it'll direct you to take what's an inspired action when the time is right. Mark, every time I win, I hear a voice saying, my turn is coming. Does it mean I'm attached? No. If you hear a voice saying your turn is coming, I could be your higher authentic self assuring you that relax, you're going to win. Just take your time. Don't get attached. If it was your ego, your ego would tell you, stop playing. It ain't going to happen. The voices tell you your time is coming. That's a higher voice. Yes, it means your subconscious is trying to break free from the lack mentality. Yeah, like, yeah, that's correct. Revision. Have you done it successfully? What's your take on it? Can someone enlighten me? What is revision? Is revision where you rewrite the past? Something of that sort? I've heard revision before, but can someone explain to me what revision is? I'm not quite sure what revision is. What is the revision? Right. So guys, you can, now you kind of understand, right? That everything is what inside of you projected outside so don't focus on the outside focus more on the inside revision is rewrite your future and jump timelines yes that's very effective it's the same as uh, writing the present tense I would love to know I've never heard of that before yeah revision is to rewrite your future and jump into timelines so you would write what you're doing now as if it's already done like in the from the from the present to the future, like now. Yeah, that works because it's your subconscious mind that's doing the um, creating. It's to rewrite the past. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, that would work because your mind doesn't know the difference between the past. Subconscious doesn't know past, future. Everything is present. Plus, it's illog is illogical. That means it can't think. When something gets impressed by doing it over and over, it's going to accept it. So, yes to revision. If you want to manifest to become an athlete, how come you only focus on it without putting in work? Okay, well, now it looks, that's what I'm saying, showing you guys. What depends on what you're manifesting. So, if you're an athlete, an athlete has to do work. So, it's not saying you can't be an athlete without doing work. You, you become a, you you do this by incorporating the visual, that will make you the better athlete. That will take you to the winning edge. So if you're an athlete, you visualize doing that. Now, if you want to become an athlete, then you have to start with visualizing that first, so you can get the inspiration, motivation to do this stuff. So it just depends. It's very it's, it's depends on what you want to create and what you're doing in your life. Revision is creating an alternate outcome from past to future. Okay. I figured it was that. Yeah, you got to work to be an athlete, man. It's um, just like if you're like lifting a body. Now, if you're like, say, a body lifter, right? You're a weight lifter, body lifter guy, like the big body lifters. Uh, you have to lift the body, right? The weight to get to, to, right? To visualize that. That's like you're a really big muscle. But interesting thing though, interesting thing about that though is that did you also know, right, that you don't have to go to the gym. You can actually use your mind to create muscle, to get lean, to release weight without ever going to the gym. Did you know you can do that? You can create a six pack. You can create toned arms. All of that without ever going to the gym. Now, I'm not talking about bulking up like big body muscle type. I'm talking about just the average person that wants to get lean or just defined. You don't have to ever go to the gym. Your mind can create that.
Someone asked how. Here's how it works. The cells in your body inside, they can't see outside of you. So how do the cells know what to create? You, they have to see an image in your head. So when you put, when you, if you see yourself as a certain image, like fit, lean, and cut, and you do that over and over, the cells in your body thinks that's your actual body. So what's going to happen now, they're going to morph. You're going to burn more metabolism. You're going to, your, body, your muscles will start to sculpt and form. And it's all done to your subconscious because it's illogical. It's going to listen to the cells. And if you keep seeing that image every night, when you look in the mirror, the image you see in the mirror is going to be the image you see image in the head is going to be the mirror, image in the mirror because your cells are li looking for information that's repetitive. So people do that all the time. They just sit, chill, they relax, they meditate, and they see the image and in a couple months, they have the body because the cells associate that and the muscles and the cells will start to... It's called the placebo effect. <clears throat> Where the body believes something literally with intention and repetition and it takes you have, well you have to do this every day and it's going to take a few months to do this but you have to do it repetitively for the information to get impressed into your subconscious but you can do that you can use the mind because the mind is reality it shows your mind is matter my take on manifesting more than three things at a time you can if you can stay focused can you also make your body increase in height yes you can make your body increase in height. <clears throat> but you got to believe it though. Believe it. Because your body is... Your, your cells listen to you. Your cells listen to you. Your cells listen to you. <clears throat> Remember guys. Um. Okay, this is important to know. Remember, your body can't see outside of you, okay? Got to remember that. Only your eyes can see outside, right? So whatever you look in the mirror and you see, that's you seeing that. Your body, body, your body only knows what you put in the head as what to what you want. That's how the body creates because your body's inside, right? It's, it's, cells are interior. Your, your exterior world is through the visionary cortex, so it's like what I think in my head and how I feel and think. My body manipulates my DNA or my cells to turn a certain way. I've manifested 30 pounds lost with no diet change. I talk to my DNA. Yep. That's, that's what it's known as. Yep. Because your cells listen. Your cells communicate. They speak to your body in a molecular level. That's right. She knows how to do this. This is love and light. She knows what to do. Love and light. Yeah, I'm in Florida. Take Talk to your DNA. Yeah, because your body understands you because it's coded for you. Can you give an example of how you'd speak to your DNA? Yeah, you speak to your DNA in a question form. Most powerful way to do it. It's like, why am I so thin and lean? Why am I so handsome? Why are my hair growing so fast? Why am I releasing so much weight? Why do I have the perfect weight? What would it feel like to be such and such? Why do I look like this? That's how you talk to your body. Because the question is going to be answered as an experience to your subconscious. Why am I so tall? Why am I growing so tall all of a sudden? Why do I feel so good? Why am I so healthy and strong? Why are all the cells in my body so healthy and strong? Why is my heart so healthy and strong? Why is my lungs, lungs so healthy and strong? Why am I in perfect health? Why do I have so much energy? Stuff like that. Why am I so fit? Why am I so lean? All of that. That's how you talk to your cells. Why am I so abundant? Yeah, anything. But for the body-wise, you do that stuff like that. Why am I in perfect health? 
No, you, you know, you're not going to say, why do I never age? Because the, body, the subconscious doesn't understand a negative, so it's just going to hear age. Don't say, why do I never age? You got to say, why am I so healthy, young, and strong? Or why do I consistently look so young? So subconscious mind here is young. So you're just going to keep young. That's, you got to understand how the subconscious mind works. Don't say like, why do I never age? It's just going to hear age. Okay, remember, can't do, never is like a negative, so you're just going to say age. So you got to say, why am I so young? Why do I look so young? Stuff like that. No, don't say, don't say, why do I age backwards? No, no. Just say, why do I look so young? Why am I so young? Why am I consistently young? It's the way, verbiage you use because your subconscious is illogical. You can't process certain stuff. You never say, why, why do I lose weight? You never say that to your subconscious. You say, why, do I, why am I releasing weight? When you lose something, your mind's going to try to find it back again. So you're going to lose the weight. Next few months, it's going to put it back on you. Because your mind is, when we lose stuff, our mind tries to find it. When you lose your key, the first thing you do, you look to find it. So when you say lose weight, it's going to lose the weight, but it's going to come back on you in a few months because your mind says, we lost it, but we got to find it and put it back on. So you got to use a certain verbiage and words to trigger your mind, like release it. Why do I release so much weight? Why am I releasing weight? Release means it's gone. It's never going to come back on. Why am I so lucky, rich, healthy, good looking? Yep. Yeah. Those, you have to learn know how to sub, so the subconscious is tricky, man. It's a tricky thing, man. People, people talk to their subconscious and they think they're affecting. It goes the opposite way. That's why you never say stuff. Just tell your subconscious what you want. You never say to your subconscious, "Why am I quitting smoking?" No, you don't say that stuff. You're just gonna hear smoking. You gotta find a different way to target the subconscious. Stuff like that. Why do I pull only tens? Now, you could say, why do I pull only tens? Maybe your subconscious is illogical. I know what you mean by tens. You mean like girls or whatever. So if you say, why do I, why do I pull only tens? You're just going to be pulling tens, like number tens. So you have to say, why do I pull only beautiful women? Or why do I pull only handsome guys? Or why do... So it's very illogical. So you got to remember that, guys. You can't talk to it in like a slang term. Because it's just going to give you illogical. You got to you got to be very detailed with the word and the verbiage. Yes, why am I releasing so much weight? Why do I release perfect weight? Why am I the perfect ideal weight? See, things like that because your body knows what your ideal current weight is. All of those take time to learn and master. So some of us be using words and we think we're helping ourselves. We're really like making it worse. So these are stuff you just got to like learn. You can do the same thing for getting weight and muscle. You know. Why am I so physically strong and muscular? Stuff like that. You can even use comparison. You can see somebody that's fit and strong. You can say their name. You can use them as a comparison. You say, why am I so fit and strong like such and such? And then to put an image in a person's in a person head, your subconscious will believe that's you because... Your subconscious associates people with you. It doesn't know them. So if you put an image of the person you want to look like in your head, the subconscious is going to believe it's you and it'll work on that. But you have to do it every day. Yeah, your life can change like that. Mark, can you talk about the difference between an affirmations and your and you are affirmation? And you are affirmations, please. You mean the questions? The bottom line is you should use questions for affirmations. Affirmations are statements. I am wealthy. I am strong. I am all that stuff. That's not really going to create any any um, change in your life, man. Your subconscious is a question-answer generator. Your questions are your answers to your subconscious. Remember, you want to initiate the subconscious. So you have to use questions to get the subconscious. If you say, I am healthy and strong, it's not going to do anything to your life. There's no action. There's no call to action. Your subconscious assists and agrees with you, even if you're not healthy and strong, because it's illogical. Now you have to go and say, why am I so healthy and strong? Now it's going to look to prove to you why you're healthy and strong, by making you feel healthy and strong. Your subconscious is a call to action mind. You have to call it to action. Your conscious mind is a logical, analytical mind. It's the, it's the statement mind. There's no call to action in your conscious mind. You have to use your conscious mind to call it to action to your subconscious mind. 
Oh, you can say, uh, I am, why am I so wealthy? Why are you? No, you don't want to say, why are you? You want to use, why am I so wealthy? Because you're associating as, as you. When you say, why are you so, why, why are you so wealthy and strong? Then the subconscious mind now is illogical. Who's you? Why are you? So always put things as I am. Of course, you put thoughts in writing. What, what, what do I say uh, to get rid of my headaches? You can just say, why, why, is, why, do, why is my head feeling so light and good? Why do I feel so good in my head? Why am I pain-free in my head? How would it make me feel to have less pain in my head? Why are my headaches gone? See? Stuff like that. That's how you're going to target your subconscious mind. Why are my headaches gone? Why am I having less and less headaches? Less will equal no headaches. It's the language you use to communicate is the secret. So I hope you learned something here. That eye opener that is the way you talk to yourselves. And the language they taught us is kind of misleading. Just be specific. And then you'll get the answers, right? Simply ask the universe to show you what they know you desire or what is meant for you. That's a good channel too. Can you say you are healthy and strong? Okay, let me show you. I am healthy and strong. Now let me do this. Why am I healthy and strong? See the difference? I am healthy and strong. There's nothing there. Why am I healthy and strong? There's something there. Now it's going to show me why I'm healthy and strong. Um, a statement closes your mind. Question opens your mind. That's what you need to do. That note, guys. I'll catch you next time. See you.